Is my screen visible now? Yes, your screen is visible. You should now go on the slide share, slide show mode. Good evening, everyone. So first of all, I would like to thank AIOS and Yossi for giving me this opportunity to present my journal club at such a big platform. I would also like to thank Sonal Ma'am and Kaushik sir, who were my mentors and who have helped me throughout in making this presentation. So we are going to discuss about the legendary trial, Hawk and Harrier phase three multi-center randomized double mass trials of Rolucizumab for neovascular age-related macular degeneration. It was published in Ophthalmology, Journal of American Academy of Ophthalmology with an impact factor of 8.47 in January 2020 issue. Authors have no financial disclosures. Coming to the disease under the study, that is neovascular age-related macular degeneration. As we all know, it is a chronic progressive vision-threatening form of AMD. Its increased prevalence and the cost pertaining to the treatment are the direct concerns. And Brolyucizumab is a newer anti-VEGF, which is a molecule under the study. It is a very small molecule. Uh, it is a humanized single chain variable fragment antibody, which inhibits VEGF A. And it has a low molecular weight of approximately 26 kilo daltons, but it delivers a greater molar dose, has a better tissue penetration and increased duration of action also. So when we compare it with other anti-VEGF agents, as I've already explained, it is a very smaller molecule with a molecular weight of 26 kilo, Dalton, uh, kilo daltons and the dose is 6 milligram, but the molar concentration which it provides is 24. Coming to the purpose of the study, it was to compare Brolucizumab with Aflibercept to treat neovascular AMD. Coming to the methods, this was a phase 3 prospective randomized double mass multicentric trial which was carried out in two years in 400 sites in parts of America, Europe, Asia, Australia, and Japan. And the sample size was 1817 patients with untreated active CNVM due to AMD. The inclusion criteria was uh, patients with age more than 50 years with active CNVM lesions, which affects the central subfield or macular area at screening, and both occult and classic CNV lesions were included as assessed by FFA. Presence of any fluid, either intraretinal, subretinal, or sub-RP fluid as assessed on SDOCT was included. BCVA between 78 and 23 ETD RS letters was included. And all this was assessments were made by Duke Reading Center for Hawk and Vienna Reading Center for Harriet. Exclusion criteria included any active intraocular or periocular infection, any geographic atrophy, patient taking any other approved treatment for neovascular AMD, patient having any other intraocular condition, history of any intraocular surgery, any uncontrolled glaucoma or AFAQ or absence of posterior capsule, all these were excluded. Patient having a patient consuming any other intraocular corticosteroids or topical or systemic corticosteroids, undergoing therapeutic radiations in the steady eye or having significant medical history or hypersensitivity to any component of the test article, a pregnant or lactating woman were also excluded. In case if both the eyes were eligible, the eyes with the worst BCVA was selected, and if both the eyes were having same BCVA, right eye was selected as a steady eye. Coming to the randomization in Hawk trial, the patients are divided into three groups in Brolyucizumab 3 mg, 6 mg, and Aflibercept 2 mg. In Haria, they were randomized into two groups, Brolyucizumab 6 mg and Aflibercept 2 mg. Coming to the treatment protocol, after the initial loading phase, when injections were given at week 0, 4, and 8, the first disease activity was assessed at 16th week. Later, the interval was adjusted to every 8 week for brolycizumab if disease activity was discovered. If no disease activity was discovered, it was continued with every 12 week interval for 2 years. Aflibercept was injected at every 8 week intervals. Disease activity monitoring was done based on the functional and anatomic characteristics at week 20 till week 92 at every three monthly intervals. This is a concert diagram showing the treatment protocol, which I've already explained in the previous slide. Coming to the assessments, the efficacy assessments were in the form of BCVA using ETDRS method. And uh, by SDOCD, presence or absence of any fluid intraretinal, subretinal or sub rp fluid was assessed. These were the weekly assessments based on the basis of change in BCVA and presence or absence of any intraretinal fluid. Safety assessments or entire safety assessments, including the general physical examination, the blood, uh, blood, uh, the blood exam, uh, investigations, and complete pre-injection and post-injection assessments were done. 
Uh, coming to the outcome measures, the main outcome measure uh, that is the primary outcome was non inferiority in mean BCVA change from baseline to week 48. Other secondary key endpoints included BCVA change from baseline averaged over the period of week 36 through week 48. Secondly, the, the percentage of patients who maintained every 12 week dosing throughout week 48. Anatomical outcomes that is presence of uh, presence or absence of any subretinal, intraretinal, or sub RT fluid, and safety endpoints. Statistical analysis was done by analysis of variance model and Kaplan year analysis. And it was a standard double masking trial and with the, with the patients and the physicians who performed the post injection examination were masked. Only the injecting physician and on site person were unmasked. A sample size of 297 ice per arm was derived. Coming to the results in the form of BCVA, in both the trials, each prolucizumab arm demonstrated non-inferiority versus aflibercept in least square mean BCVA change from baseline to week 48. In Hawk, prolucizumab 3 mg and 6 mg treated eyes gained plus 6.1 and plus 6 point letters respectively, compared to plus 6.8 letters in aflibercept treated eyes. And in Harrier, prolucizumab gained plus 6.9 letters compared with plus 7.6 letters with aflibercept treated eyes. So prolicisomab was also non-inferior to aflibercept in least square mean BCVA change from baseline averaged over the period of week 36 through week 48 in both the trials. This is a table showing the increase in the BCVA in both the trials. And this is a graph showing the BCVA changes in both the trials. Coming to the probability of every 12 week dosing maintenance over 48 weeks, it was found that 49.4% probability was there with prolicizumab 3 mg and 55.6% for 6 mg prolicizumab in Hawk and 51.0% for 6 mg prolicizumab in Harrier. And if a prolicizumab treated eye did not show disease activity during the first 12 weeks interval, the probabilities for remaining on every 12 week dosing up to week 48 increased to 80.9% with 3 mg rolicizumab and 85.4% with 6 mg rolicizumab in HOP and 81.7% with 6 mg rolicizumab in Harrier. So each of these four BCVA related non inferiority the hypothesis of HOC reached statistical significance with p-value less than 0.025. These four BCVA related uh, hypotheses were non-inferiority in uh, mean BCVA change from baseline to week 48, BCVA change from baseline averaged over the period of week 36 through week 48, every 12 week dosing maintenance over 48 weeks and if no disease activity occurred in during the first 12 week intervals, the probabilities for remaining on every 12 week dosing up to week 48. Coming to the disease activity assessments and anatomic outcomes, the disease activity at week 16, we can see in the graph, it was uh, less with the prolicizumab uh, in 3 mg and 6 mg in the hawk and similar in the harrier. And the central subfield thickness reduction was also better with the prolicizumab uh, in both the trials. The presence of intraretinal fluid or subretinal fluid and sub RPE fluid was also lesser with the prolicizumab in both the trials. Coming to the safety assessments, brolicizumab is well tolerated. Overall, ocular and non-ocular adverse event rates were similar to those with aflibercept aflib within each trial. The most common ocular adverse effects were conjunctival hemorrhage and reduced visual acuity. Other adverse events of concern were uveitis and iritis. Raised IOP was similar with both brolicizumab and aflibercept. The incidence of serious ocular adverse events like Andoff and CRA or RD or traumatic cataract were very less. And other incidents of thromboembolic events and death was also very less. This is the table showing all the adverse effects. Coming to the discussion part, neovascular AMD is a variable disease course with individual treatment needs. It was found that patients with early persistent retinal fluid have better outcomes with more frequent treatment and presence of retinal fluid and increased central subfoval thickness on OCT are better indicators of disease activity compared with the BCVA-based indicators. And goal of neovascular AMD management is to determine the therapeutic needs on an individual basis and treat accordingly to achieve an optimal visual outcome with minimum clinical visits and the in, in, intravitreal injection burden. So there, uh, so we have prorenator regimens and treat and extent regimens. And uh, with the standard treat and extent regimens extended the treatment interval in two week increments, the total number of injections of rolicism in first year are found to be nine to 10 injections in one year. So Hawk and Harrier are the first multinational 
uh, neovascular AMD trials to use masked ophthalmologists to identify disease activity after the loading phase to decide a suitable maintenance dose interval. And this approach allowed the ophthalmologist to adjust to every eight week from every 12 week dosing if required according to the anatomical outcome. So this every eight week allocation was not randomized, but actually it was disease driven. And uh, so this comparison is not a comparison was not valid. This is data support that the predictive value of dynamic changes early in the treatment course may offer a, a paradigm for efficient and individualized long term neovascular AMD management. Coming to the critical appraisal that is the MARI format. Methods, as I've already discussed, it is a phase three, and it is a non-inferiority trial proving that Afri, uh, proving that rolizumab is as good as aflibercept, and uh, it was of two years duration, and uh, they have taken 408 sites, but the total number of patients were 1817, so it is approximately four patients per site, so the chances of bias are, can be more with this. Assignment randomization was uh, uh, fine in both the Hawk and Harrier trials, but the eight week, uh, every eight week allocation was not randomized, but it was driven by the uh, disease activity. Comparative analysis of eyes treated exclusively with the every 12 week interval versus every eight week intervals was not valid. And there was uh, the uh, uh, masking was very efficient and the assessment, uh, the Functional and anatomic assessments of the disease activity at every 12 week and every eight week dosing interval was done in the form of BCVA changes and presence or absence of any intraretinal fluid. Uh, but there were no quantitative assessments of this uh, intraretinal or subretinal fluid, only presence or absence was considered. Safety analysis was also done. The summarization of the results, it was, at, it was found that at week 48, each prolicizumab arm demonstrated non-inferiority to aflibercept and BCVA change from baseline. And uh, greater than 50% of prolicizumab 6 mg treated eyes are maintained on every 12-week dosing through week 48. At week 16, after identical treatment exposure, fewer prolicizumab 6 mg treated eyes had disease activity versus aflibercept. And there was greater central subfield thickness reductions from baseline to week 48 were observed with prolicizumab 6 mg versus aflibercept. Yeah, adverse event rates were similar with uh, both the anti vegf agents. So the interpretation is that Hawk and Harrier studies have successfully evaluated prolicizumab as an alternative treatment option with prolonged duration of action, with favorable visual and functional outcomes, effective treatment scheduling, individualizing treatment regimen, and reducing the cost and number of injections uh, over uh, minimizing the overall burden. So prolicizumab is a newer drug adding to the armamentarium of already available anti-VEGF agents for treatment of neovascular AMD. It is a smaller molecule with greater molar dose and more effective tissue penetration. It has a better pharmacokinetics and increased duration of action lowers the frequency of injections and overall reduces the treatment burden. Intraocular inflammation is a concern. And so we have a prolucizumab safety update by Vitro Retinal Society of India where we can uh, report all such events. Thank you.